Hello guys and welcome to part 2 in our WX Python series here on the Coders Legacy channel. In this video we're going to take a look at creating buttons, okay, or the button widget in WX Python. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do actually is create a panel. Okay, yes, a panel. Basically it's like this, self.panel is equal to wx.panel and this is like the format for pretty much everything, okay, wx dot and then the widget name, okay. And if you didn't already get the memo from the wx dot frame over here, this is basically how it is, okay? So wx.panel, wx.button, wx.static text, and so on, okay? And the panel is pretty simple to set up, okay? It has a few parameters, but we just need to pass in the parent, the parent right now, okay? So what is the parent gonna be? The frame, okay? Because we're putting the panel into the frame, okay? So that's why the, the parent of the panel is the frame. And the reason why we have this entire parenting system is to basically denote a kind of hierarchy. Like you have the WS Python window, then you have the panel inside of it, which is the content area. Okay, a panel is a content area. It's the content area in which you put widgets. Okay, you can put the widgets directly into the frame. Well, not fine. Technically, you could actually, I think. But you need to use a panel. Okay, that's a better approach. And because you can also use several panels, you can actually take four or five panels and then use them all. Like you can basically divide your window into four parts, make four panels and put them each into one quadrant. Okay. It's kind of cool because you end up with four different content areas and you can make different adjustments to each one of them separately. Okay. So they can have different settings. Some, some of them can have some widgets, some of them can have some widgets. It's just a good way of organizing things. Okay. And you'll learn more about this kind of stuff in layouts as well. Okay. Once we actually begin, you know, the layout management stuff. Okay. So, um, one more thing I want to mention, which I don't think I mentioned in the last video is that we passed in parent is equal to none over here, right? For the wx.frame. So why did we do that? Well, it's kind of obvious because this is our main window. It doesn't have a parent. Okay. If we were creating some kind of a sub window, okay. Or something, maybe something like that. So then maybe uh, we could, you know, make the parent the main window, okay? But this is our main window, so we don't need to do that, okay? So uh, here's our panel setup, and I'll go ahead and create the button now, okay? Sorry, I'll call it, uh, let's call it button, okay? And I'll call wx.button, okay? And what is the parent going to be? Well, it's not going to be self, which is the frame. It's going to be self.panel, okay? Because I want to put this button inside the panel, okay? And what are the parameters? Well, the first one is label, okay? Um, what should I put on this button? Press me. How's that? Okay, and what else? There's size and position, so let's do that. Let's take, let's take a look at size first. Size is equal to what? Uh, you know what? We'll change the size later. Let's leave it at default for now. Okay. So I'll just put this somewhere in the window. Okay. And let's just run this and see what happens. All right. Here, uh, hold on. There's our WX Python button. And if you've noticed, you, see, you can see that the background color of the window has changed a bit. That's because there's a panel in there now. Previously there wasn't. Okay. So here's our button. Okay. Now, obviously, when I click it right now, nothing happens, okay? And that's because we haven't linked this button to, um, we haven't linked it to a function yet, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Well, I'm going to go ahead here and say button dot, uh, what was it? Button dot bind, okay? And the bind function is available on any widget, okay? You can use it on the frame, you can use it on the panel, the button, the static text widget, and whatever, okay? Bind is something that's common across all widgets, okay? And what are the parameters? Okay, now I should explain the event system a bit. Well, you see every widget has its own unique event. The button has a button event. The static text widget has a text event. The, what other widgets are there? The combo box has a combo box event, okay? Some widgets have several events, okay? Some of the more complicated ones. But basically what this uh, events mean usually is when they're interacted with. So in the buttons case, the WX event button is an event generated when the button is pressed, okay? That's pretty simple, I think. So all we need to do is pass in two parameters. 
the event that we want to bind, okay, and the function that we want to bind the event to. So we're sort of saying that to this button, I want to bind the event button widget, sorry, the event button event, and this function. So what is this function? Well, let's just uh, make up a function self dot on click, okay, and I'll go down here now and actually create this function def on click and there's self. Now the thing is, hold on, uh, that the bind function, it automatically passes in uh, an extra parameter, okay? It's called e, e for event, okay? Now e basically is the event, okay? So it has a lot of basic information as well regarding the widget that triggered the event, okay? So I'll make a variable here called widget and do e dot get event object. And with this, I'm going to find out which widget actually called the, um, which widget actually called this function. Okay, so let me show you something cool. Widget dot uh, get class name. And again, this is a function that's um, common across all variables. Sorry, what am I saying? All widgets. Okay, it's common across all widgets. Okay. So if I click the button here now, okay, this is our um, function, this is our button. It's now linked to a function. So I'll click it and there you go. It prints out WX button, okay? That's the class name for this widget, okay? So if it was something like uh, a check button, for example, that triggered this event, it would print out WX check button, okay? So yeah, but the basic point is that now that we have this function set up, we can do wh whatever we want in here, okay? that we now begin linking this to something actually, you know, uh, important. Like maybe we can do something like self dot close. Okay. So this button just became a quit button. Okay. I'll click it and there you go. Our window is now closed. Okay. And we can go ahead and do whatever now, honestly, let's try disable. Okay. I've never tried this one before. So let's see what happens. Okay, there you go, look, uh, I can't interact with this window anymore. Okay, that's interesting. I can only apparently close it by doing this. So that's kind of dangerous actually, come to think of it. Uh, but yeah, I guess avoid using that on the frame, I guess. Okay, so is there anything else we need to discuss? Well, let's, ah yeah, of course, of course. Let's take a look at styles, okay? Styles and, and the functions for the button, okay? So I'm going to do widget, sorry, print widget dot get label. This is something I want to show you guys. Okay. This is going to print out the label on the button, which is press me. Okay. Pretty cool. And I'll also show you something else. Widget dot set label. Okay. And I'll pass in, I have been pressed or more like we'll just pass in pressed. Okay. Now what's this going to do? is change the label on it, the button once I click it, okay? So that's kind of cool. Now, by the way, I just want to mention one more thing. If you guys don't like what I'm doing here, okay? Like you don't like the entire E thing and for some reason, if you just don't like doing this, there's an alternative option that you can pick. You can do like self dot button, okay? And then just, sorry, hold on. That was a little too much. And you can just do self dot button over here and then do the same thing. Okay. Get label and whatever. Okay. But I don't really recommend doing that because it's not exactly a replacement. Okay. Not exactly. Hold on. Let me just undo all that. Okay. So the thing is with this current system, it's generic. Okay. So you, uh, if you have like 10 buttons, okay. And you can make it w just one function for all of them. Well, okay. That depends on what they're for. Okay. But uh, generally speaking, this is kind of handy, okay? That you can just handle any type of widget that may call this function, okay? So it's kind of useful. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for the methods. The button doesn't really have many methods, okay? So let's take a look at some of the styles, okay? The styles for the button. And let's just do this down here, okay? <clears throat> now, well, the thing is, the button only really has uh, six styles, I think. 
and four of them are to do with alignment, which are pretty much the main ones that I think you'll ever need. So I can't actually show you the alignment ones without increasing the size. And I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and try using the button left alignment. Okay. Now let me run this code and you'll see what the problem. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. Look at that. It actually does show up because actually there's a default size for the buttons. And if the button doesn't grow enough or if the text is too small, uh, then they can, they, they, sometimes you won't notice the alignment. Okay. You won't notice the alignment sometimes unless you actually increase the size. Okay. I'll just go ahead and do that to 150. Okay. Oof, look at that comma. All right. There we go. So you can notice it a bit better over here, the alignment. Okay. So let's just go ahead and let me show you some, some other stuff. You can do top, you can do bottom, you can do right. Okay. Let me run this. And there you go. Okay. So you can do this in a manner. Uh, you can do this in a lot of different ways. Okay. And what else is there? Um, well, there's one thing that's kind of useless in my opinion, but, uh, what was it? BU and no text, right? Let's see what this does because it should remove the text. Yeah, the text is now invisible. So if you're into that kind of thing, then sure, go ahead. Then there's also border, none. I've never tried this one before either. Let's see what happens. Okay, maybe maybe because there wasn't a border or something. But yeah, never mind. So you can go ahead and try these styles out. I'll have a link to the website again where you can find all of them and all the methods that are written down over there. Okay. Besides this, there's one last thing I want to show you guys. Okay. One last thing. It's basically uh, putting in an image on the button. Okay. You know, like those buttons which have images on them. Okay. So I'll show you that. It's button dot set bitmap. Okay, now I already have a few bitmap files saved inside uh, my um, directory where this file is saved. So I don't need to go around downloading them or anything right now. I'll include a link to a download file which has a bunch of bitmaps that I have on hand with me. So you can go ahead and try them out. Okay, it's a bunch of useful stuff like um, the open uh, icon, the save icon, stuff like that. Okay, bitmaps are a bit hard to find. So I'll include a link for those. Okay. And this is how you do it. Basically button dot set bitmap. You use WX dot bitmap to set up a bitmap. This takes a single parameter, which is the name of the bitmap file. So in my case, it's save dot BMP. Okay. And let me just do this. I hope I got the name right. Yeah, there you go. Okay. It's kind of small the icon. So let's make this a bit smaller too. 80 and 30. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, so if I just change the text to save, we have a save button. Okay, not too bad. That's a, that's a save icon, by the way. Okay, so pretty cool, right? So with that, I think we've covered pretty much everything that we could for the button, at least right now, that is. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the static text widget. And yeah, we have some pretty cool stuff coming up. So make, make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, maybe be sure to follow the series through, okay, if you really want to explore WX Python from start to finish, okay? So make sure not to skip anything, all right? So I guess I'll see you guys in a later video.